Okay, so now you have an idea of what the architecture of a simple computer looks like. Now we're going to apply that to the Marie simulator that we'll be using to do the first of our assembly language programming. Let me get this to work. There we go. Okay, so the Marie machi machine architecture, it stands for, well, Marie is Marie machine architecture that is really intuitive and easy. Isn't that clever? Okay, so this is a very simple architecture. It can't do really sophisticated operations, but it should give you an idea of what assembly language is all about and how you can actually control the data that's coming to and from different parts of the computer. Okay, so these are the specifics of the Marie architecture. Um, it uses binary numbers, and the negative numbers are represented by two's complement. Okay, it has stored program, meaning that you can save a file and run it again later. Um, each instruction in that program is of a fixed length, so you can't have some instructions that are 16 bits and some that are 30 bits. It's all going to be 16-bit words here in Marie. Uh, there are 4K words of word addressable main memory. That's how much space you have to keep data that you're going to be using in a computer. Now that's very limited. I mean, in a real computer you'd have much, much more space for um, addressing memory locations. And you'll see that there are ways we have to work around this. Um, but it, it's a good way to start. Um, all of the data words, so the instructions and everything going in and out of the computer is 16-bit. Four of those bits are for what we call the opcode. The opcode gives the instruction as to what operation is going to be performed. And then 12 bits are for the address. And that address might be an address in memory, it might be a memory register, it may be different places. Okay, the arithmetic logic unit handles 16-bit instructions. And we have seven different registers that we're going to use for control and data movement. And you'll get used to these. And that's quite a, you know, this list of seven can see kind of, seem kind of intimidating at first, but you'll get used to it. Okay, so one of the registers is the accumulator, referred to as the AC. The accumulator is a 16-bit register, and it holds whatever operator you're going to be using, whether it's plus, minus, multiply, you know, less than, greater than, equal to, whatever. That's in the accumulator. And you can think of it as holding the result of the most recent operation. The MAR is the memory address register. That's also a 12-bit register. And it holds the address of an instruction, right? Or the operand of an instruction, which you'll see. There are instructions can, that can kind of link to another instruction, sort of like um, pointers. Okay, if you've done any programming with C++, you might have used pointers in the data structures class, or if you've done any C programming, or Java. The memory buffer register is another 16-bit bit register, and it just holds data after it's been received from memory or after it's gone to the arithmetic logic unit, for example, and it comes back waiting to go to memory. It's just a temporary location for data to be stored. So, so far, the accumulator, the memory address register, and the memory buffer register. Next is the program counter. It holds the address of the next instruction to be executed. The instructions, as you put them into your computer to run, will be held in sequential memory locations. So you can start at one address and then just go simply to the next 12-bit, uh, yeah, 12-bit location in memory, or 16-bit actually, and then to the next 16-bit and so on. So that you can, it will go in sequence from one to the next, and the program counter keeps track of where the next instruction is going to be. The instruction register, the IR, is the instruction that's currently being executed. All right, so, I mean, this happens quickly. An address is in the instruction register, the clock ticks, the then the address that was in the program counter immediately goes into the instruction register. Okay, so it, they, it cycles through the different instructions. Okay, they would go through the program counter and then into the instruction register to be executed. There's an input register. It's just an 8-bit register, and you'll see why later, um, that gets data from an input device like the keyboard, which is what we'll be using, and an output register, another 8-bit register, that we'll be using to send data out to the screen. Okay, so that's all seven. And this is sort of a 
graphical representation of what it looks like. Over here in our CPU, this is all in the CPU, we have the arithmetic logic unit that contains the accumulator, the AC, and the memory buffer register. Data is going to be going in and out of here to go to the accumulator, to the ALU. Okay. Over here we have an out register, which is sending data out to the screen. The in reg brings things in from the keyboard. The memory address register is going out to main memory and getting something. It goes to an address in memory, gets that thing, puts it in the memory buffer register for it to be used. And then over here we have the program counter. This is the control unit, the traffic cop, the program counter, and the instruction register. So remember the program counter keeps track of the next instruction, and the instruction register holds the address of the instruction right before it's being executed, right? Because as soon as it starts executing it, the one from the program counter goes into the instruction register. Okay. So all of these registers are connected to each other and they there's a common bus, a common data bus that connects them all and you'll see that on the next slide. Um, and each device on the bus has has like a number that keeps track of which it is so that the operating system can handle what's going where. Um, also the accumulator and the memory buffer register have some separate connections and the ALU and the accumulator do within themselves just to speed things up. Okay, And so what it does is it allows them to communicate without having to travel the full length of the, um, the main data bus. So this is what it looks like. So here we have, and this is not necessarily physically looking like this, but logically this is how it would look. We have our main memory and this is your RAM and it connects to the bus line and the, the sequence is going in a clockwise direction here. Notice the arrows are always going toward the right. We have our memory address register which w can connect to directly to the main memory to speed things up or go on the bus line. Our program counter, memory buffer register, things going back and forth quickly between the memory buffer register and the accumulator so they can be processed and also with the arithmetic logic unit. You can go almost any direction you need to there and then the in register, the out register, and the instruction register. Okay. Now I realize that when you look at this you may say, huh? It doesn't make a whole lot of sense quite yet, but as soon as you start programming with this you're going to see how how really quickly and um, I don't know, it's kind of just a sophisticated little simulator we're working with here, which is pretty cool. That's it.